Hey everyone and welcome to my channel. Today let's talk about the React ecosystem. So React is a JavaScript library that was built by Facebook and a typical React component would look something like this. But as you can see, the, the React syntax is very similar to HTML or more precisely XML. But if you were to write XML in JavaScript, you would run into errors because XML is just not valid JavaScript syntax. So how is it possible that React is capable of handling XML within your JavaScript files? So that is where the ecosystem comes into the picture. So React um, is blessed uh, to be present at a time where so many developer tools have come into play. And some of them are Babel, Webpack, and ES6. So ES6 is not exactly a tool, but ES6 is a specification for how the JavaScript uh, world would, would change in the future. Uh, so ES6 contains all the features that the browsers would eventually implement and it, it serves as a guide. But what's the point if the browsers don't have the feature, right? So that's where Babel comes into play. So Babel is a tool that allows you to write uh, your code in features that, that aren't in browsers today, but Babel would, would convert the features into uh, the features that browsers can actually use today. So ES6 is actually converted to ES5 through Babel. So if you if you write your uh, if you declare variables using let us say let or const keywords which are which are which are not present in ES5, Babel will convert them into var. The var keyword is actually present in ES5. Similarly, async await paradigm where you can write functions which are asynchronous, Babel can convert them into functions that return promises. And uh, let's also talk about Webpack. So Webpack is uh, a bundler, a model bundler, which can take various kinds of files and, and generate uh, production ready build files. So let us say in a typical project, uh, you, you have a, a website to, to build and it has, let us say four pages, home, about, blog, and let's say article pages. So each of these pages are unique and they have different modules or components that are unique to those pages. So generally you, you end up writing, uh, let us say 30 to 40 modules, and it is not ideal to load all of these modules in the browser because you want to save bandwidth and you want to save, you want to limit the number of requests that you make to the server. So that is where Webpack comes into play. Webpack can take all of these components and modules and spit out bundles which are optimized for, for, for the network as well. Webpack is also capable of giving you a great developer experience. It has something called hot loading, which allows a developer to to change uh, his source code and not have to reload the page to look at the output. Webpack is also capable of, uh, of making bundles which are route driven. So when you combine your app with React Router uh, and you declare routes uh, using a configuration with Webpack, you can tell your React code that when I'm in the home page, I only want the scripts that are, that are relevant to the home page. And I only want scripts pertaining to the about page in the about page and so on. React Router is also capable of, of uh, nested routes. So you can define routes uh, in multiple depths and you can also define which component mounts on which route. So on the home page, you probably want to load the home component and the about page will probably need the about component, right? And then, uh, you can also define params. So when, let us say you are trying to implement a profile page, each profile page is unique. So when you, when you load, when you try to access, to, to access the profile page of a friend, uh, you, you generally implement a route like this, slash profile, slash the name of your friend. So the name of your friend is actually a param and React Router is also capable of handling params. And uh, some of the other things that React Router can do is actually fetch some data when you're on a particular route. And before loading the component, you can fetch the data and then uh, show the component on the screen. And then there is Redux. So React is actually just a view layer. It is not capable of handling models and controllers. What Redux does is it fills that gap. Redux is a very capable state management tool that is sort of built with React in mind. It is, it is definitely uh, possible to run Redux with Angular or, or Vue or any other framework out there, but Redux makes more sense when you're using it React because 
uh, React doesn't have anything that Redux does and Redux sort of complements React in a way. Redux also works very well with React Router. So your state management is seamless across the app, no matter which route you're in. So since there are so many tools to, uh, to work with, sometimes it can be a problem to configure all of these tools for your, for your next app. So that is where Create React App comes into play. Create React App is a tool that was built by Facebook for the exact purpose that you, you shouldn't have to worry about Babel Webpack in ES6 if you are starting up with React. So Create React App scaffolds a new app for you with Babel Webpack ES6 pre-configured and internal to the project. And when you start the app, you have a, a completely production ready app uh, ready for you. All you have to do is just start changing the code and making it work for you. It's also ready to be deployable to Heroku, GitHub Pages and Now.sh. And if at some point you, you feel that you want to have configuration, which is which is uh, even more powerful than Create React App, if you want to change something in the code and uh, if you want to improve what Create React App already gave you, then you can always eject out from Create React App and all the Babel Webpack and ES6 configurations are made available to you so you can start tweaking the babel.js file or webpack.js file and make the app even better. So let's also talk about some other notable tools which a lot of people use. Uh, so earlier, the, the example that I showed you is actually React when used with React DOM. So React DOM is, is a library that makes React run in the alongside DOM elements. So React is, is actually platform independent. You can write uh, React logic anywhere, you can write React logic independent from the platform. So React DOM is actually what makes React run in the browser. And similarly, React Native is what makes React run in iOS and Android. So you can write uh, your, your app logic using React and you can make it run simultaneously on iOS and Android with very little configuration. And TypeScript is is an alternative to ES6. TypeScript also has a lot of features that ES6 has and uh, it sort of complements React very well. Then RS, RxJS is, is a very unique framework that it actually suggests writing, mod, writing logic in the form of streams. And it, it's a very powerful concept and MobX, the other module, the other uh, member here, the, the logo with the V, uh, MobX, sort of takes RxJS to the next level and actually implements a Redux-like uh, state management tool but using RxJS. And Apollo is a framework that is built to handle GraphQL-like responses, sorry, GraphQL responses within React. So you can make API calls in different ways and generally we are used to making API calls using the REST specification. But uh, GraphQL is sort of picking up, in, picking up in pace recently and Apollo is a framework that is catered to GraphQL with React. I hope you liked the video and in the next uh, few lectures, we'll, we'll be diving into some code lectures on React and see how, how we can build uh, beautiful components using React. Thank you.